Hello everyone, welcome to the editorial analysis of the Shankar Ayes Academy brought to you by the Civil Speedia team. And this current affairs video is for the date 3rd of October 2024. So before going into the list of articles that we would be discussing, there is just a small announcement to be made. The pre-storming UPSC prelims test series of 2025 batch 2 starts on 5th October 2024. So interested students are welcomed and the admissions are open. So now let us move on to the list of articles discussed. The topics for discussion are as follows. First article titled A Mirage Called Peace discusses about the uh, ongoing conflict of Israel and Iran and their global complications and impacts. And this article is from the Indian Express. And the next article titled A Case of Nothing But Patent Censorship is article which discusses the IT rules being changed by the Supreme Court recently. And this article is from the Hindu. So without any much further delay, let's get into the articles discussion one by one. So moving on to the first editorial article titled A Mirage Called Peace. This article uh, examines the intensifying violence in the Middle East, highlighting Israel's complex multi-front conflicts involving Hezbollah, Hamas, Iran and other enemies. It explores the challenges of securing peace in a region where marked by long-standing tensions and advanced forms of warfare. So, before looking into what the article is, let us see a main practice question. Discuss the current tensions in the Middle East and impact on India's relationship with Israel and Arab states. In your opinion, how should India respond to this situation? So, in order to answer this question, we can first start with the Middle East uh, conflicts situation of the conflict and of course when talking about India's relationship with Israel and Arab states it not just signifies oil dependency but which we have seen in the uh, before video but also other conflict of areas especially in your opinion and how India should respond to this situation can be addressed as a way forward. So, in framework of this article, let us see the answer to this question and also at the same time, I request the students to put down their question and the answer to it in the comment section and it will be reviewed. So, now looking into the background of the Middle East conflict, the escalating violence is in the Middle East arises from the deep-rooted geopolitical tensions, religious conflicts and territorial disputes where it involves uh, Israel, Hezbollah, Hamas and Iran and other actors and especially these four are the key actors. The military confrontations and the proxy wars driven by the uh, advanced weaponry further hinder the peace efforts in the conflict. Now let us look into the key fronts in the Middle East. First is the widespread conflict. So fighting spans the area of Gaza Strip, West Bank, Hezbollah that is the Lebanon and the Houthi forces of the Yemen and Iran. Looking into the recent tensions, the assassinations such as the Hezbollah leader Hassan Nasrallah and the Iranian missile strikes show the escalating or the ongoing violence. Looking into the Israel's technological warfare, Israel uses advanced technology like the targeted assassinations and remote detonations. Detonations are nothing but where it causes explosions. And uh, high profile killings like the leaders like Ismail Hania and uh, Hassan Nasrallah have been targeted. And looking into the strategic focus, Israel emphasizes intelligence and technological superiority when it comes to its military operations. Now let us look into the international response when it comes to this conflict. Uh, Hamas attack and Israeli response. In the light of the international response, Hamas attacked on October 7 led to the Israel's large scale offensive which includes the land and its people. Here, sympathy for Israel has been decreased as the Gaza's death toll surpasses almost 41,000 and thus there is diminished global support. Attention has shifted to the impact on women, children and the elderly and there is focus on the humanitarian crisis. So, leading to the conflict calls for a ceasefire having failed due to the conflict of strategic goals. Thus, it leads to unsuccessful uh, ceasefire attempts. So, looking into the Iran and Hezbollah's involvement, the Iran's missile strikes and Hezbollah's actions complicate peace efforts and may regain some international support for the Israel. Looking into the Hezbollah's and Iran's strategic interests, when it comes to the impact on Lebanon, uh, Hezbollah's deep ties to Lebanese society and its role in violence contribute to Lebanon being labelled as a failing state. Uh, looking into the Israel strategy, targeted assassination of Hezbollah leaders 
are key to Israel's military approach, but often it results in civilian casualties and international criticism. Next is the complex con uh, conflict. Hezbollah links to Iran and its strong presence in Lebanon com uh, complicate the conflict, especially with increased uh, Iranian involvement after Nasrallah's assass uh, assassination. Now, looking into India and Israel relationship, India exports military equipments and arms to Israel from both public and private sectors. Uh, despite the Gaza conflict, India continues to issue export license for arms despite international concerns over humanitarian laws. Here, India maintains a very strong defense partnership with Israel, where it includes arm, arm deals, uh, military cooperation and other technological transfers. Looking into the impact of Israel and Lebanon conflict in India, uh, ob objectives like diplomatic challenge is being questioned. Here, India's balanced ties with Israel and the Arab world are strained by the Israel-Lebanon conflict, creating a diplomatic challenge. Thus, a dehyphenation strategy is needed. Next is the inflation risk or the rising inflation. A full-scale war could uh, disrupt oil and gas supply, pushing up the prices and inflation in India, which depends on the imported energy. Next is the rupee depreciation. Here, due to the inflation, there could be reduced foreign direct investment and higher oil prices could widen India's current account deficit that is CAD leading to weaker rupee. Next is India uh, affecting India and Israel trade. Prolonged conflict may hurt the trade with Israel a key partner. In uh, financial year of 2023, India exports to Israel were almost $8.4 billion while the imports were almost $2.4 billion. When it comes to the diaspora and remittances, India's large West Asian diaspora sends almost $40 billion remittances as we have seen in the earlier video. A broader conflict could cut the remittances and make evacuation a bit more difficult. Thus, as a conclusion, there need to be a balanced approach uh, that acknowledges the interest of both Israel and Iran, which is vital for achieving the peace. Here, there needs to be fostering of the, that is, growing of the mutual trust and encourage to restrain among all parties to essentially break the cycle of conflict. Thus, there need to be fair uh, listening of the perspectives of both the sides and maintaining a neutral stance. India also can enhance its credibility as a mediator while effectively balancing its relations with Israel and the Arab states. Moving on to the last article titled A Case of Nothing But the Patent Censorship. On September 2024, the Bombay High Court has struck down a part of the IT rules 2021, which allowed the government's fact check unit to label the news about the activities as fake or misleading. If it is flagged by the uh, FCU or the fact check unit, the internet platforms had to remove the content where there is losing legal protection, which is called the safe harbor, which shields them from being sued for the user's post. The court ruled this amendment as it violated free speech rights as it gave too much control to the government over online information. The judgment emphasized that any limits on the free speech must align with the constitution. So first let us look into the constitutional prov uh, provisions on free speech. So before that let us have a mains answer writing. Examine the implication of Bombay High Court ruling and the unconstitutionality of the amended IT rules 2021 with respect to free speech and the role of intermediaries. Discuss the balance between controlling the fake news and protecting fundamental rights in the digital space. So here we can first bringing in a introduction on what is free speech and how and the IT rules which was first given and the uh, importance of the amended rules and also the role of intermediaries such as the uh, Facebook or WhatsApp and their stand on protecting the user's diligence or uh, dignity whenever it comes to post and so on. And also we can bring comparisons between these all categories and how it ultimately helps in protecting fundamental rights in the digital space as the way forward. So, I also request the aspirants to give in their uh, answers to this question in the comment section so that it can be reviewed. So, in framework of this article, let us see how the question can be answered.
So looking into the constitutional framework, the article clause 1 sub clause A guarantees freedom of speech and expression. The article 19 clause 1 allows uh, specific reasonable restrictions on the free speech such as public order, defamation, uh, national security and relations with the other foreign states. So thus any restrictions on the free speech must be reasonable and explicitly need to, it need to be mentioned in the constitution. Now let us look into the Safe Harbor Act under the IT Act of 2000. So this act called the Safe Harbor, it protects the intermediaries like the social media platforms for example Facebook, WhatsApp and so on from being held responsible for content that users post that is B. Thus this protection is called as Safe Harbor here. Uh, it means that if someone posts something illegal like hate speech for example or any fake news the platform won't be blamed as long as it follows the certain rules. Here the platforms have to follow due diligence such as removing the flagged illegal content to keep this protection. Here the court emphasized the importance of this protection to ensure free flow of information online. Now moving to the information technology, uh, intermediary guidelines and digital media ethics code of rules 2021. Here these rules regulate the intermediaries like the social media platforms and other OTT services where there is insurance of compliance with the laws and related to fake news or privacy violations etc. Under the rule 1BB, it mandates the intermediaries where they must remove the content flagged by the government fact check unit as it is identified as fake, false or misleading. Here this provision sparked a lot of debates about its implication on free speech and censorship. The rules aim to balance internet freedom with national security and public order as few of the objectives but it faced criticism for potentially overstepping the constitutional boundaries. Looking into a few case studies on the judicial interpretation, the first one is the Shreya Singhal versus the Union of India. Here, there was struck down of the Section 66A of IT Act as being vague and overbroad, where there is affirming that free speech restrictions must be clearly defined. Next is Justice Chandurkar's verdict of 2024. Here, the declared rule of the Rule 3 1 BV as unconstitutional where there is reaffirming that the only article clause 2 can specify valid grounds for restricting free speech. And finally when it comes to courts, they have consistently held that the free speech can be uh, only limited within the framework of article uh, clause 2 which does not cover false or any misleading information. Now looking at the arg argument on why uh, the amendment is important on combating the free speech argument, we should also look into why this rule was first brought in as looking into the government's argument here. Uh, when it comes to the rationale that is the reason for the IIT rules, the government argues that false information on in online poses as a national security threat and it also harms the public order. So the FCU aims to provide a mechanism to tackle tackle this issue by identifying misinformation related to government affairs. Here the government uh, defends the regulations as a balance between free speech and prevailing the spread of misinformation. Now what is chilling effect? The chilling effect refers to the indirect discouragement of free expression due to the fear of government retaliation or liability that is due to the fear of government's uh, consequences. Here the when it comes to the impact of the IT rule by requiring the intermediaries to remove the flagged content there is a risk that the platform may over censor to avoid penalties. There is the, uh, for example in order to get sued or in order to pay the platform fee or the penalty Sometimes the platform can even cover up or overcover the news totally. So thereby by restricting the free expression, the information is compromised. So this was the central argument against the rule 31BB in the Bombay High Court. 
so rather to uh, since a news has been flagged as illegal and when a penalty has been uh, imposed without referring to the safe harbor option the platforms we sometimes take the whole information ahead so this can lead to all, also free expression and at the same time it leads the citizens to not know about an information at all so in order to tackle this this was made as an important and a standard argument in the uh, high court case so now let us look a way forward for the balancing of uh, free speech and regulation first is to have a clear guidelines as any future amendments to the it rules must clearly define the scope of the restriction on speech ensuring they uh, adhere to the that is they uh, get in touch with the reasonable restrictions under the article and uh, the role of the judiciary here there should need to be continued judicial oversight which is necessary to ensure the regulation do not infringe or uh, disturb any constitutional rights and finally is to have a consultative approach that is involving the stakeholders including digital platforms and civil societies where it is essential to formulate a balanced policies thank you for watching this video don't forget to give a like comment and a share and to further not to miss any other contents subscribe to our channel thank you and have a nice day